Biden says America last. That's the focus of tonight's angle. 70% of Republicans feel like the presidential election was neither free nor fair, according to a new uh, Morning Consult political poll. Now, of that group, 78% believe mass mail-in voting led to widespread fraud. 72% of that group think the ballots were tampered with. But nevertheless, Biden is pretending that the election has been certified and that all legal challenges have been resolved. He isn't committed to addressing voting irregularities or restoring faith in our elections, but he is committed to restoring the world's faith in America as essentially a blank check. I'm letting him know that America's back. Uh, we're going to be back in the game. It's not American alone. Number one, I've got had the opportunity to speak uh, with uh, now uh, six world leaders. The reception and welcome we've gotten around the world from our allies and our friends has been real. So I feel confident that when he says we're back, <laughs> first of all, has he seen the economic numbers? Well, he means that he'll continue the ignoble tradition of subverting U.S. sovereignty by selling out American workers to a world order where key decisions are made overseas with little to no accountability to the U.S. Uh, citizens here. Now, the Obama gang is back, that's for sure. Samantha Powers, Ben Rhodes, Susan Rice, and they intend to do what is, whatever is necessary to reverse all the progress Trump's team made in holding NATO accountable for their military expenditures and China accountable for their anti-competitive trade practices. Here are the highlights of Biden's globalist shop of horrors. Buckle up. First, he will rejoin the Paris Climate Accord. It should be noted that the U.S. has led the world in CO2 emissions reductions since it exited the Paris Climate Accord under Trump. Biden's decision to rejoin the agreement would mean severe damage to the American economy. When Obama first joined Paris, he committed the U.S. to cut emissions 26 to 28 percent by 2025 as part of this, quote, accord. But Biden's promise to impose even more economically crippling climate policies. Meanwhile, China would continue to get sweetheart exemptions. In fact, the CCP spent the four years since it joined the accord building more than 300 coal plants around the world. Second, Biden would rejoin the World Health Organization. Now, after the fiasco with the WHO's work on the virus, Trump was right to put the relationship on ice. The New York Times on the day before the election even reported that as it praised Beijing, the WHO concealed concessions to China and may have sacrificed the best chance to unravel the virus's origins. It agreed not to examine China's early response or begin investigating the animal source. It could not even secure a visit to Wuhan. Yet Biden? wants to put the U.S. taxpayers back on the hook for hundreds of millions of dollars of the WHO? Think about that. Third, he's going to re-enter the Iran deal. Now, the Iran deal was an absolute disaster, so of course Biden wants to re-enter it. It was supposed to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon and improve our relationship with their terror funding regime, but instead, it accomplished neither. The Iranians loved it, though, and why wouldn't they? We literally flew them planes loaded with cash, which they, in all likelihood, used to fund more terrorism. Fourth, Biden is also threatening to lift Trump's travel bans from jihadi hotspots around the world. So we'll only not, not only send the mullahs more spending money, but we're going to let their agents into our cities. Biden should have called his foreign policy plan what it is. <laughs> Blow up better. Fifth allowing NATO to keep ripping us off. Now, are they now off the hook or will Biden just refund all the member countries, the $130 billion Trump got him to pony up? My friends, Europe loves a compliant uh, United States. So of course they love Clinton and Obama, except for Thatcher and John Paul II. Europe didn't like Reagan because he didn't take orders from them. They've pretty much hated every Republican president for, what, the past 50 years or so? Brussels loves weak U.S. presidents because it means international pressure will work, even if it means a lower standard of living for average Americans as a result. 
The EU is already salivating over what a Biden presidency means for the WTO, too. French Trade Minister Frank Reister is already making bold requests of Biden. The AP reports that Reister had another request of Biden to approve the appointment of Nigeria's former finance minister as the WTO's next director general. We know that today the United States is blocking her nomination, even though there is a large consensus among other, all the other states. The WTO is paralyzed. We need to give it strength back, he said. Well, of course, China is ecstatic about this as well, knowing that under Biden, it will be able to run the table on trade with no roadblocks, weak oversight and no tariffs. After all, Biden spent his entire political career kowtowing to Beijing. A lot of people think that allowing China into the World Trade Organization, which he supported, extending most favored nation status to China, which he supported, allowed China to take advantage of the United States. You think in retrospect that you were naive about China? No. Here's the thing. In the context of that, we want China to grow. <laughs> well, Biden will be a weak president because he'll apologize for America. Our racism, our Second Amendment, our gas-guzzling vehicles, our violence. Is that what America thought it was getting by voting for him? Most probably didn't think much about foreign policy at all, which is unfortunate. In Trump, we have a president who will always, always put America's interests first, period. But Biden, like Obama before him, is embarrassed by the very idea of American exceptionalism. Remember, if you think America is systemically racist, how can America be exceptional? Answer, it can't. This lurch backward for America remains, uh, it is once again how important these Georgia Senate races are. We need the ability to hold hearings on all the globalist nonsense that they're going to be pulling and where possible threaten to gum up the funding of it. And just for the record, Despite the president-elect backdrop and media shout-outs, the final state tallies are not yet in, and President Trump has yet to concede anything. What do you say to the Americans that are anxious over the fact that President Trump has yet to concede and what that might mean for the country? Well, um, I just think it's an embarrassment. Um, Quite frankly. How do you expect to work with Republicans if they won't even acknowledge you as president-elect? They will. <laughs> Not if the final votes don't go your way or if widespread voter fraud is established, which will take time. And Team Biden's presidential posturing and daily COVID briefings won't do anything to hasten that timeline. And that's the angle.